I remember hearing these words as I walked across campus. There are so many freaking fobs in the comm school. Fob. Fresh off the boat. A word used to describe Asian immigrants to the USA. Implying that they've done too much to preserve their own culture and not enough to integrate into our American society. It's a word primarily used by Asian Americans to differentiate themselves from other Asians, but in the most condescending way possible. I recognize my classmate, a Chinese American, complaining to other Chinese Americans about how many fobs he keeps running into. 我上大学的时候选择中文和历史双学位我特别喜欢这些课程我也很快把我的大学的很多中国留学生当做朋友经常去他们组织的公寓去玩经常去参加他们组织的活动期间我发现我可能是唯一的参加聚会的华裔有时
I've been discriminated by a lot of internationals, both in China and in America. They wonder why my Chinese sucks. In America, they often only associate with other Chinese. Hard finding an international Chinese partner to practice Chinese with, converse with them, especially in Chinese, because the whole point is to practice Chinese. They always get responses like, why is your Chinese so bad? Whereas when they practice with white people, they always praise the white people's Chinese. To me, it's rather sad. Being prejudiced in other ways, if you're looking for an English teaching job and you have an Asian face and you're not able to a job just because of that, even though you grew up in America. And this is pieces of Chinese people in general. I believe there might be a slight bit of resentment toward Hawaii. They think that we've had a more privileged life than we have. They think that things have been handed to us more than they have. Some things might be true. Most of the tension comes from the whole viewing of more recent arrivals to the United States as just something we don't want to be associated with because we see them also as associated with the negative stereotypes that we don't want to be cast upon us. We don't want to be associated with these traditional things. For example, traditional values. Here, there's always that stereotype of the super overachieving nerdy Asian and we don't want to be associated with that. We see a lot of news about root Chinese tourists and we also don't want to be associated with that. We want to be associated with being Americanized and being respectful and following American customs while not realizing that maybe these Chinese customs or Chinese ways of acting are just not inherently better or worse. Chinese人 他代表了一家经常与我合作的公司，最后他建议我放弃自媒体的尝试。我随后与这家公司的老板联络，发现这个假粉丝是他们的实习生，但是他们并不支持他的行为。在只做这个视频前，我两次邀请这个火热的粉
stupid， 或者非常的穷，一无所有，然后他们完全搞不懂我们这个国家到底是在做什么的这样的一种感觉。没有另外的群体，他们的感受是什么？但我可以想象，这是对这些华裔群体或者黑人群体都是一个非常 offensive 的词。Called a fob is not a bad thing in the U.S. because it means that you're recognized as being more Chinese, and that's where the opportunities are. When people think that I'm fobby, I think that's a compliment because it shows that I'm making progress in what I'm trying to do here in China. Fob is used by Chinese people trying to stratify Chinese in America, so Chinese Americans use it against Chinese who maybe came a little bit later than they did. I think those words are derogatory and discriminatory. It is used, yes, I would equate that to racial discrimination. I think what matters is the intent behind it. 老移民还会用这个词来表示对。新移民的一些歧视，我觉得这个挺恶心，而且也挺自卑的一种表现。首先，他们并不认同自己的华裔的身份，但是他们又改变不了自己的肤色。一些用来指称亚裔移民的词和 Negro， 我觉得这其实就是没有什么区别吧。因为就像我们叫黑鬼一样，其实我们本身这个词里面就表达了我们对这群人的一种看法、一种态度。Negro 这是一个很侮辱人的词。同样，你用香蕉人，其实你用这个词的时候，你已经把你自己对这群人的态度和看法已经是注入到里边了。使用这些词。的人一定不是中国人，土生土长的中国人是不会用这些词去说自己的同胞的。你被称为香蕉的人的原因，更大的可能性，能用这些词的人，他不是中国人。如果他们不是中国人，你觉得他们是哪的人？他可能会就是华裔啊，会。可以跟你保证，华裔不会用香蕉人、卖国贼去称呼别的华裔。到现在还不太相信中国人会说这个词，或者说有一些蔑称啊，或者有一些攻击性的词语，完全没有。那你觉得我在说谎吗？你觉得意识到这个问题的华裔中国人也在说谎吗？在说谎，一定是说谎加夸张。周杰来说，你觉得我们说谎的原因何在？求关注，求关注。你觉得就是为了求关注？对，希望别人更多的关注他。其实，在中国根本就不会有这种情况的。中国人不会会歧视这个，歧视在国外可能有，在中国是绝对不会有的。中国是一个很包容的一个社会。好的，谢谢你，没有别的问题。When I began to work on this project, I did not get a lot of support, personally or on a professional working level. Both Chinese and Hua Yi, who are aware that I'm pursuing this project, have encouraged me not to pursue this. Oh come on, Victor, you just gotta move on. People hate each other. It's a normal fact of life. 我其实有几个中国朋友跟我说类似的话。不要再浪费你的时间，你太无聊了。不要继续钻牛角尖。美国人不是强调人权和自由言论吗？讨厌一群人是我的自由，这是我的权利。Yes, you do have that right. And if it's so much easier to hate than to try to listen, than to try to understand others, no one can stop you.
How do you think tensions and misunderstandings can be eased between Chinese and Huawei? Not just is about China and Huawei between the issues. Do you think we people should be able to build a bridge or find a way to solve these differences? I think we need more cross-cultural exchanges. Media is really the most powerful tool for educating Westerners about Chinese culture and educate Chinese people about Western culture. So, for instance, this film project I think will play a small role in handling some of these differences. It's important that these stories continue to be told because there can't be enough of it. We are still the world. We all live in a world of the world. We all should have the best. 说出这句话，提前是要看长期才能解决问题。And see maybe where the differences lie, similarities also lie, and how to celebrate these similarities and differences instead of using them as a way to antagonize one another. 作为一个在新疆长大孩子，可能多少会有一些感受过不一样文化的地方，所以来到北京，有些时候就出于一种文化的差异性、文化的不了解，会导致一些分歧的发生，一些偏见的发生。我知道这种偏见很难消除，就要能去减少，增强这种文化的交流。We all have our own story. You shouldn't be so quick to judge. Everybody can teach you something, and that's the same for Hawaii. That counts for Chinese people. We all have different experiences, and I think it's better to just share them than to simply criticize. I think to a certain extent, we all have our own prejudices because we don't know each other's experiences, and we base what we know on our experiences. And I think that's also how we judge others. I think it would be very difficult to bridge. I think dialogue will help, but the format of dialogue is what would answer that question, and I I'm still unsure of how to answer that. For Hawaii, I won't accept. 龙的传人的这个事实，对于中国人来说，承认华裔不是中国人，他生长在另外的一方土地上，那他一定不是中国人。所以两方都要包容一些，求同存异，认清楚双方都是有差距的。关于华裔的身份认同，我可能有一个小建议，每个人都可以选择自己的文化认同和身份认同。如果有兴趣，可以多进行了解，多来中国看一看，多和中国人交流。这样的话，有利于消除一些偏见和误会。中华文化是一个非常不错的选择。To other Hawaii, you try that chance, but I don't recommend making any opinion of this place based on what you see just in Western media or just online. Forming a real opinion requires you to consolidate all that information, a well-rounded opinion to share with others. This is a very difficult thing because, for any foreign country, this kind of attitude is very difficult. Let them keep an open mind and a curiosity, rather than at first have a fear. For example, Chinese people may feel that some actions of Hawaii may be very different. Instead of, oh, this is too strange. It makes me feel very upset. They actually ask me to reflect on their environment and their Chinese environment. Is there a difference? Don't take a personal view or a deep view to hold onto a particular group of people. Rather, keep an open attitude and a collaborative attitude. Be positive about those kind of people, whoever they are. Sit down with them in an organizational way to create a community to communicate proactively to solve not just the misunderstanding to go over the top. It means to solve other people. Misunderstanding other people's problems. Oh, 对了 ，Victor， 我也想问你一个问题，有时你也会有一些偏见吗？你是不是在生活中自己有没有一些偏见的行为 ？Uh, of course I don't. Actually, when I think about it, that answer doesn't make sense. I am not perfect. I have my biases. I am not above prejudice because no one is. I have said certain things about certain groups of people in the past that I should not have said. So my answer is yes. 没错，我也有偏见，但是我每天尽可能在坚守我对别人的刻板印象和一些错误的定式。My prejudice, our prejudice, 我们的偏见。Prejudice is built into humankind. As long as there are differences between people, differences of language, skin color, social customs, that creates room for prejudice. Having prejudices does not make us bad people. It means that we must use what we learn through our education, observation, experiences to handle our impulses of prejudice. I'm not expecting everyone to become friends. I know that's not possible. To judge and stratify people is completely normal, but I hope that it will be based only on this person's character. And nothing else. Being from the United States, where discrimination has always existed, I know that these kinds of problems are not solved within a lifetime or even within a century. Perceptions are rooted deeply, and to eradicate prejudice and stereotypes is impossible. What is possible is to accept that there are differences between people. Maybe these differences shock you, and maybe even to a certain extent offend you. This might sound strange. But I'm not telling everyone to accept people's differences. What is critical is to understand where others are coming from. Maybe even after you understand, you're not enthralled by their background. But at the very least, you know their story, and that allows for a foundation of respect to be constructed. Who is this video for? It's for everyone. 
And I want this video to be about everyone, to be about prejudice and how we examine those prejudices by examining our tensions, by examining our misunderstandings, by examining our gaps in communication. And I need to thank all my participants for answering my questions honestly. You're all very brave for getting on camera, for expressing your thoughts and sharing your stories. And I need to thank you for listening. I know that prejudices won't disappear just because I made this video, but your willingness to understand is very important and meaningful. So I say again, thank you so much, and you're truly the best.